Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of access control in PHP. In the first part we talked about authentication. In the second part we are going to focus on authorization. Together authentication and authorization makes up the access control for a complete system. So the first thing is what is authorization? The process of giving the user permission to access a specific resource or a function on a web page is termed as authorization. And how is authorization done? There are very usually different ways in which this is done. Uh, server needs to keep track of the users that are actually valid and logged in so that they can provide the resource to them. Uh, the one that we are going to focus on in this session is called session-based authorization. Okay, so we talked about this where we had a restricted zone and someone, which is the, you know, the guard, checking the ID to allow the user into the restricted zone. So this was supposed to be the authentication because you are actually checking if the user is what or who he or she says they are. Okay, so now let's suppose that we inside the restricted zone, we have different zones and not everyone who is authenticated can access all the zones. So once the authentic authentication is done, the user goes into the restricted zone. Now to access each one of the zones inside the restricted area, you have to have access to them. Consider this like a secure building where inside the building you have many rooms. Now not all rooms are accessible by you. So only those rooms are accessible by you can only be accessed when you go inside. So this is what authorization does. Authorization tells you which resource is restricted and who can access this restricted resource. Now, in our project, we were talking about buy from me. We had the index page, which is a resource. Every page in our, in our server for this project is a resource. So the index page and then inside the index page we have access to the login page we have access to the stuff.php page and we have access to the contact.php page each stuff page has a list of items in the stuff page we have a list of items and we can get more details about each item by going to the item.php page once the login is successful you will be redirected to a control panel for the admin and you can also log out if you're not doing anything else. Once the log admin logs in, can either add a new item or modify an existing item. If they want to modify an existing item, they can update the item or delete the item. Now all these functionality which is done after the user is logged in are all or must be you know, authorized. So the admin is the only person who can access the add item, delete item, modify item, and update item pages. Not everyone who comes to the buy from me web page should be able to access all the pages. The other user in our case is a visitor who is just logging in to see the list of items or you know probably buy them. And then it will become a user rather than a visitor. Uh, so in this case you can see that everything that is outside the zone can be accessible by the user, by the visitor. The stuff.php page, item.php page, contact page, an index page, even the login page. Because the login page is a form, so they can access it. Uh, but once, if they don't have the username and password, they cannot log in. So that means they fail the authentication. So this is what is happening. So what we need to do right now is to implement authorization. We did authentication. That means we are checking if the username and password exists in the database or not. So let's go back uh, to our scenario of how we are going to do this. We did the scenario for authentication where the user enters the username and password in the login form. The username and password is verified from the database. The database finds the key, the, the database finds the username and password combination. Once it finds this, it creates a session log it's entry in the section session log to tell that you are now a valid 
<coughs> you're not you're now a valid user that means you have been authenticated so next time you come in i don't need to check you again i know that you have valid authentication i might need to check the database for what you are authorized to do but this right now is enough for me once it does that the next step is a session id is created based on the session log and this id is sent back to the user the user has to remember this so the user stores this id inside something called as a cookie so a cookie is some a st structure a data structure that is in the client side is usually inside the browser many people use them for different reasons but this this cookie is a value that we will be storing inside the browser so now next time whenever the user needs to access the a resource which is secure so it will request the resource which is restricted so no one else can access that so you have to send along with your request a header inside the header you send the value of the cookie and the value of this cookie is the session id so once the server receives it, it will extract the session id compares it it's within the session log gets probably your username or your authorization level and based on that checks whether the resource that you're trying to request is actually authorized for you to access if yes it will give you access if not it will stop you from accessing it okay so this is what we are going to implement in this level we are going to first of all check whether the resources can be uh, are supposed to be restricted okay so let's uh, go ahead and do that let's close this okay so if this was our last page that we did we had the login page and inside the login page we had the uh, we checked uh, what we did was we were checking for example let's say including db config and then we had checked whether the login button was pressed and if it was pressed then we got the username and password once we receive the username and password, we did MD5. MD5 here would be to, to you know, hash the password so that it can be compared with the hashed password in the database. And then we will check the user if the user exists or not inside the database by comparing the username and password. If the username exists, and then we run the query, and if they exist, that means the number of rows that will be returned will be 1. If, it, if it's, it's 0, that means the username doesn't exist. It cannot be more than one because it's a, we are comparing the username, which is a unique key. So it cannot be more than one. It should not be more than one. Okay. So if it's one, that means successful. Now, we were not doing much here. We were actually just redirecting to the log CP admin page. You know, just that's it. And then else, we just said error one. And then we went down and we displayed an error message saying that the username and password is incorrect. Please try again later. Okay, so what we have to do right now is to add the functionality here inside our, you know, once the user is successfully authenticated. So the, this is the place where we start with the authorization process. Okay, now before we do that, let me just tell you that currently there is no authorization implemented. How do we know that? So if you go to your page and let's say, for example, click on go to the top of the page and let's say for example say uh, add item say so i can see it so no one is actually checking whether i'm logged in or not logged in so even if i'm not logged in i can still do that i can still go to any of the restricted pages so i can for example go to cp admin page cp admin page see see these are all supposed to be restricted resources because not everyone should be able to update or modify an item. So what we, have, what we are going to do right now is we are going to restrict these resources for only those people who are successfully authenticated as an admin. So let's do that now. So let's go back to our home page. Let's go back to this page and say we have identified this is the location which we need to fix. Before we go to the CP admin, we have to do something here. 